Wir bewahren den korrekten Fluss der Zeit. Sie haben mit dem Tesserakt die Realität zerbrochen. Sie müssen uns helfen, sie wieder zu kitten. Hello, it's really nice to have a chat with you, so thank you for your time. No, thank you. And of course, happy release day and uh, congr congratulations for uh, directing such a huge project like Loki. Which brings me to my first question. What are the main differences for you um, directing a major project like Loki now, especially when it comes to creative freedom and working on set? Yeah, sure. So I think the the thing I would say is obviously like there's it make it sounds so cheesy right but you almost it made me feel like a kid again because we had these huge awesome sets and i was like oh my god i'm standing in the tva and yeah so definitely in terms of that that was so exciting to me and just some of the effects we got to work with and filming the action like it was honestly like you know when i worked out i wanted to make films like you you know Holly, like these big Hollywood films, a lot of them were the kind of like my route into my passion for like wanting to do this job. So getting to work on a scale like this has been amazing. Uh, the one thing I'd say is familiar though, is that there's never enough time. <laughs> it's like you're always up against the clock and there's always challenges. So in some ways from making my short films where I had to like, you know, be like, okay, how do I make this work on what I have? Like that definitely still came into play here. because you know, it's filmmaking and things can change last minute or go wrong. So Yeah, and I think really just the thing that was the same as well is that I've always gotten very well with my cast and the crew. And I think it's really about, it's a team effort and just kind of, you know, building a great group of people around you so you can tell this story. So yeah, so I really, yeah, had a good time. <laughs> great. You know, Loki for me is a character with some shades of gray, you know, like he's anywhere between a villain and an anti-hero. Uh, I think that are the most or yeah the most interesting characters and stories have you been able to take some of that away from sex education where many elements are also full of you know um shades of gray yeah definitely i mean i'm so interested in stories about identity and like you said like the gray area in between good and bad and i think with loki it was really fun because obviously he as you said like he's gone from villain to anti-hero across the movies but the loki we have is not the loki who died in infinity war it's the loki from avengers <laughs> and he's in a very different emotional space then so i think what was exciting for me was the you know nature and nurture aspect of it the sense that you know we saw this avengers loki you know he was arrested and he goes to asgard and he goes on a very different path whereas our loki we're putting him into this bureaucratic organization and it's like okay so will he have the same growth or will he be slightly different and how what will those differences be so i think for me that was really exciting like digging into that but in regards to sex education i would say really it was just about wearing our heart on our sleeves and kind of i think it's always character and emotion first for me like you know like if i think if you feel like the characters emotions are real then the fantastical circumstances you kind of go along with it so yeah <laughs> mm -hmm, for sure and unfortunately the the last question because the time's running in another interview on this channel regarding the falcon and the winter soldier they talked about treating it like a six-hour movie is that a similar case with loki and if so what are the differences and maybe the benefits too yeah sure so i would say with our show like I'd say it's like a six hour movie in the sense that, you know, like how Marvel run these, like we're not making these in the showrunner TV system. Like they were making them like a movie. So that's the best way I could describe it. Like the way I work with the writing team um, and just, yeah, that I, you know, it was just me directing it. And we didn't film usually in television. You sometimes film like, you know, episode by episode, but we filmed all of it as one giant six hour thing. So it was quite a lot to undertake in that sense, in the practical sense. But I would say in terms of the story, I mean, It's, I, I think it was really important for us that it felt as epic and big scale as the Marvel movies. So it felt like you were watching something, you know, with that spectacle at home. But me and Michael were very mindful of making sure that it was satisfying to watch on a week by week basis. So that I'd say like that's where it's kind of this interesting hybrid, you know, between a television show and a film because, you know, like I love, I'm trying to think now, like Lost, for example, was a show that I loved and I loved week to week discussing with my friends, like where is that story going? And I think that's something that we've really wanted to do with this is that, yeah, it has the spectacle and it was made like a movie, but it has the same thing I hope of good television and that, you know, each episode is almost like a short story and 
hopefully we leave stuff for people to talk about week to week because we knew we were going out you know once a week and we wanted it to be enjoyed in an episodic way sounds really amazing so uh, i wish you really all the best for the next weeks with loki and for the future of course so thank you for your time thank you cheers thank you warum ich ich brauche ihre einzigartige loki perspektive bekomme ich eine waffe nein Hello, yeah, well, it's uh, great to have the opportunity to talk with you. So thank you for that. And of course, happy release day. Thanks, man. I'm stoked. At first, uh, let me ask you, what are the biggest inspirations for you writing Loki? Is it helpful that you worked on uh, Rick and Morty, which also has like different timelines and lots of crazy ideas? Yeah, it was very helpful. I mean, just, just Rick and Morty is such a big science fiction show. So I'm... I'm used to to dealing with with just you know may, maybe big concepts and and figuring out all right how how can how can you drop those in, um, explain them as quickly as possible and then move on with your with your story. Um, inspirations, a million things: Blade Runner, Mad Men, Toy Story, uh, Catch Me If You Can, Silence the Lambs, Zodiac. Uh, all I mean, really everything every movie i ever saw and loved and wanted to rip off was was an inspiration quite interesting um i mean how difficult is it to write a series within a cinematic universe i mean isn't it quite challenging to respect and maintain the canon you know especially for a series like uh like that that focuses on so many different timelines how do you manage that continuity and coherence not just in terms of the past but also of the future in the mcu well you i mean you have to become a student of the mcu for sure and have your own sort of encyclopedic knowledge up here of, of everything that's that's come before and so that's that's part of the job and then you trust your collaborators specifically the marvel executives and producers that you're working with they know you know better than any of us what's come what's coming um and so they're there to make sure that I don't accidentally unravel the entire sweater of the Marvel universe with one, one dumb idea. Speaking of the future, you are also in the lead for writing the script of Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness for Sam Raimi. What kind of movie can we expect there? I think you said it. It's a Sam Raimi movie. Um, and so I'm excited for everybody to, To, to see that when when that when that time comes all right so you cannot say anything quite <laughs> yet i guess right but, but i i think we are really excited um and unfortunately uh, maybe the last question so uh, the time's running because uh, that's something we ask our guests on every of our show what is the last movie or tv series you've seen and um do you have like maybe a tip um It's been a pretty busy stretch. I'm trying to, to think that I think the last movie I watched was uh, Mitchell's versus the machines on Netflix, Great. which was awesome, which I, which I really loved. Um, and then I'm currently watching for all mankind on Apple T TV. And that's a tremendous show. I love it so much. Space kind of a space exploration show. Uh, uh, so that's that's what I'm into right now. I, I, I love that. Everybody should check that one out if, they, if they're not already watching it. I will. I will. So um, thank you for your time. I wish you all the best for Loki, for Doctor Strange 2 and other projects in the future. So yeah, have a great day and bye. Thanks, man. Mir können Sie vertrauen. Loki, ich habe fast jeden Moment Ihres Lebens analysiert. Sie sind anderen buchstäblich an die 50 Mal in den Rücken gefallen. Also dann tue ich es nie wieder.